Well, hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to attempt to finish the share the pain machine over on Hacksmarter Labs, and we're gonna focus on privilege escalation. Now, if this is the first video that you're watching, I recommend you start from the beginning. Otherwise, you're gonna be a little bit lost, but here's a quick recap. We have access to this machine. We set up pivoting with Sliver, and we were able to connect to the MS SQL database. On the MS SQL database, we were able to enable XP command shell, which allows us to run commands as the underlying user or service. That underlying user or service has the SE impersonate privilege. Anytime you see the SE impersonate privilege in a pen test or an exam, that should always clue you into thinking, hey, maybe some type of potato attack would work here. Now, if that sounds like odd language, I know it is, but I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. Let me go ahead and share my screen, and here we are picking up where we left off, and once again, from the MS SQL server, we can do XP command shell who am I priv, and you can see we have the SE impersonate privilege right here, and that should clue you in to a potential god potato attack. Before we can run a god potato attack or to abuse that impersonate privilege, with a god potato attack, it allows us to run commands, but as an NT system authority impersonating their privileges. Now there's different kinds of potatoes, but the potato, my favorite potato, it's the one potato to rule them all, and that is the God potato. Let's go ahead and grab that, and we will download it. I'll go over to our share the pain. I'll close out all these extra windows, and let's just search for God potato. And we'll click the first link here on GitHub. Do, 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 there we go. We can click releases on the right side. And let's download godpotato.net4.exe. You can see I downloaded it before. And I'm gonna go to my web server here. I'm gonna copy from downloads, we'll do godpotato. I'll just download that one and save it to my current directory. And then I'm gonna start up my Python web server on port 80. We'll go over to my evil WinRM session, and now we want to save this to a place our other user can interact with it. A safe bet is always the temp folder. So I'm going to CD to C temp like so. Hit dir, and now we're in the temp directory. And let's do wget from RIP 10.200.0.245, and we'll do, what is it called over here? Got potato net 4exe I'm going to copy it, otherwise I guarantee you I will type it wrong and I'm gonna just save it as godpotato.exe like so. We were able to grab it, hit dir, and we can see godpotato.exe is there. Now we can go ahead and test to see if it works. If we look at the syntax here, it's godpotato-cmd and then whatever command that we want to run. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. I'm gonna do godpotato.exe-cmd and we'll do cmd who am I? And you can see we have, cannot create process and error, but we do have NT authority network service. Let me try this again. NT authority network service. Pipe connected, so it seems like, oh, you know why it doesn't work? <laughs> we are Alice. Alice Wonderland. It's not Alice.Wonderland who has this permission. Remember, which I need to remember for myself, it's our MS SQL user. And if I do who am I on here, whoops, XP command shell, who am I rather, you can see the underlying user is actually the MS SQL SQL Express. So we need to run God Potato, but as that user. So a few different ways we can go about it, but let's go ahead and use Sliver for this purpose. We already have a Sliver implant. I'm gonna copy that, I think it's from users. Actually, I don't remember where it's at. <laughs> let's go hunt it down. CD Alice Wonderland. Was it in documents that I maybe saved it? All right, and we called it pivot.exe. I'm gonna copy pivot.exe, I'm gonna bring it over to the temp directory. And now let's go to temp and make sure it's actually there. And there is pivot.exe. Now, what if we use our XP command shell and we do something like this, XP command shell, C temp pivot.exe. We 
If we do sessions here, you can see we just grabbed another session as the MS SQL SQL Express user, and here is our session ID. So let's go ahead and drop into this session. And if I do who am I, we can see we are now the MS SQL SQL Express user, and let's just drop into an interactive shell. We'll go over to the temp directory, hit dir, and now we can see God Potato there. Let's go ahead and do godpotato.exe, and now we'll try it, dash cmd, cmd slash c, who am I, and hit enter. And that's what I was looking for the first time. You can see our current user is now NT Authority System. Now there's multiple different ways that we could elevate our privileges on this machine. We could try to get a shell as NT Authority System, or we could just make our own user. One of these will work, let's first Try to get a sliver implant as NT authority system. We can go ahead and run God Potato again. God Potato.exe dash CMD. And I think if I do something like CMD C, and then we'll do temp pivot.exe like so. Hit enter. Don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm going to open up a new. Thing and just jump into sliver and see if we have any sessions going on and it looks like our only session is still the ms sql server service you can see tyler tyler joined the game we do sessions here looks like whatever i just did <laughs> i broke i broke sliver i don't know what really happened there let's jump over to this sliver session So we can run sessions. Did I break my session? Let's find out if I drop into the session. We can run who am I? Uh, I'm curious now, can I drop into a shell still? I still can drop into a shell. I don't know why that didn't work, but let's go ahead and try a different way of going about this. What if we do something like this? What if we run godpotato.exe dash cmd and then do our same command right cmd uh, dot ex C, or just cmd rather dash c to do something and what if we create a new user and we just call it um hack smarter and we'll use hack smarter one two three we'll add that user and what else we want to do let's add that user to the local group of administrators and it's the hack smarter user that we want to add and we'll do add like so. Don't know if my syntax there is correct, but let's give it a shot. Cross our fingers. The password does not meet the policy requirements. My bad, all right, let me go ahead and give my user a stronger password. I'm gonna copy all of this right here so I don't have to repeat it and I'll go here, zoom in, and we'll just add like, a, exclamation mark onto the end and give this a shot. Cross our fingers and we hope that it works. This password is longer than 14 characters. All right, YOLO, who cares? Computers with Windows prior to Windows 2000 will not be able to use this account. I mean, that's a good sign. It means it's at least attempting to make this account for us. If we go over to our evil WinRM session, we do net user. Actually, net users is what I meant. We'll give it a second. I'm breaking all the things as I attempt to do this. Looks like this is kind of aired out too. Here, I think this shell... This, this session is a little bit broken. I'm, I'm, break, I'm breaking my own machines here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm not even typing right now. All right, if I do net users. Do we see, we don't see Hack Smarter. So it does not look like that worked. All 
And now I have seemingly broke something on the machine with all of my God potato craziness. So I will use the power of video editing and I'm just going to quickly reset the machine and get things re set up real quick. Cause I think it may be broken beyond what I'm able to do much with. I mean, does this work? See, it's really slow. As you can see, all my shells got incredibly slow after trying to do that. I mean, we'll try it one more time with the very, the very slow one. I'm just going to try to add my user and I'm going to do hack smarter one. We'll do hack hack smart one. That'll be less than 14 characters. Maybe we won't get that error. I first just want to see, can I add my net user right here? So I'm going to try just this first command. And we cross our fingers with whatever I broke on this machine and see if we're able to get it to work. So far, so good. Current user NT authority system. So it appears that is attempting to add our user. Command completed successfully. All right, now let's try to run the second part of our command. So we're going to add hack smarter. Yes, yeah, so that all looks good to me. So let's just erase this part. So CMD net local group administrators hack smarter forward slash add. That looks good to me. Cross our fingers again. And hopefully this command also completes successfully. And we won't have to reset the machine from whatever I broke. Moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen, will it work? Probably not. Oh, completed successfully. All right. And what, what did I call the password? Hack smart one. Let's, let's see what happens. If I do evil win rm slash u hack smarter dash P hack smart one, I think was the IP DC one hack dot smarter. I do the right password. Hack smart one, hack smarter with hack smart one. It's just checking our evil win RM session to see if, oh, it did not work. I do see a hack smarter. If we run net user on hack smarter is our user in the local administrator group. It is being incredibly slow. Whatever I did messing around with God potato really like threw this machine for a loop. Oh, you know what? I have the wrong password. We need an exclamation mark on the end. That might be our only issue. Little, little typo there. Let's try. Maybe if I use the correct password, that would be a very good thing to do when we're trying to log into the machine. Will it work with the correct password? I don't know. And you can see our user is in the administrator group. So we were able to use God potato to create our own local admin. Now the question is, can we log in? And we can log in to our local admin user. Now, if we go over to users, administrator, desktop, with whatever I broke on the machine, this may take a moment, but if we type root.txt, we are able to get the final root flag and we successfully solve this machine. Now, it bugged out a little bit of times because of me, but that's a huge part of ethical hacking. It's experimenting. The, the one way you want to do something may not work in the moment. And if you're like me, you have no idea why it doesn't work in the moment, but you need to have the ability to fall back on various methods in order to compromise a machine. Incredibly useful in a real world engagement, but also useful if you're going for an exam like the OSCP or the PMP, PMPT or the CPTS, because those exams are notorious for throwing kind of loop balls at you. Something that should work just doesn't work. And it requires you to think on your feet to pivot to another way of doing the attack in order to accomplish the same objective. But hopefully you have enjoyed this series. And if you're 
purchase the Hack With Me. Hopefully you've enjoyed this Hack With Me as we've been working through this machine together. So hey, make sure you get all your notes cleaned up so that you are ready to document. And I will see you in the next one.